Hi, this is Stephen Chin for nighthacking.com, and I am in going to interview James Ward, who's one of the speakers at Java One this year. The Java One conference is from September 22nd through September 26th in San Francisco. If you haven't already signed up, um, there's a really nice promotion for group discounts and also through the local user group, you can get a pretty nice discount as well. Um, and I'll be live streaming all day today and next Thursday and Friday. So if you miss the live streams, you can check it out. But also all of the interviews are on nighthacking.com. So let me flip over here to, to James. How you doing, James? Hey, <laughs> Stephen, thanks for having me. So um, I, I mistakenly um, thought you were in, in Denver before, but apparently you don't live there anymore. No, no, nope. <laughs> I'm now up in the mountains uh, in Crested Butte, Colorado, the home of the Java Posse Roundup and the Scala Summit, which was just last week, and a bunch of other events that Bruce Eckel puts on. I've been trying to make it out to the Java Posse Roundup for the past couple of years, but that, that, that's always sounded really, really fun, like geeking out and then skiing. That's a good combination. It is such a good combination. It's highly recommended. And I guess for the Scala meetup, it was geeking out and mountain climbing? <laughs> mountain, biking mountain biking and some hiking. And yeah, it's uh, just getting out in Colorado in the summer and enjoying the beautiful weather. It's, it's interesting because in the, the winter, we do the sessions in the morning and then the skiing and, or whatever you want to do in the afternoon. In the summer conferences, we do it the opposite because... Oh, uh, you want to get the, the cool mountain That air. and we get it. We get a lot of afternoon thunder showers, and so so it's better uh, to be out outside in the morning before the afternoon thunder showers, and then got it, and got then it. Uh, come inside when it's when it's rainy out. So, so yeah. yeah, so we flip flop, but it's a lot of fun either way. That's pretty cool. And then you can do nighttime hacking. You can keep working as late as you want. We do, yeah. At the roundup, we do a lot of uh, group activities in the evening. Um, where like uh, we do some lightning talks, we do a progressive dinner, mm -hmm. and this year at the at the Scala Summit, um, most people just wanted to kind of hang out at Bruce's house and write some code and drink some beer and cool. eat some pizza and stuff. So so it was it was a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, so we're supposed to be chatting about Java One. So I I, I heard a rumor you're going to be out in San Francisco in a few weeks. What what do you have in store I will. for us? <laughs> Looking forward to being at Java One uh, this year. Um, I'm doing two sessions this year. So one is the Play versus Grails Smackdown with Matt Rabel, and so this is one where where Play and Grails go head to head, and we try to um, one up each other and see which one out which one comes out nice, ahead. Nice. So, yeah. so every year, are you gaining? Are you guys gaining ground on Grails? Do you think or? Uh, yeah, I think so. And you know, what's interesting is the we've we've done this SmackDown twice already, and both times. So we built a pretty extensive app as the basis of a comparison between Play and Grails. So Matt built the Grails one, and I built the Play one, and then we take a bunch of measurements on like lines of code and performance and all sorts of yeah, things yeah. to really kind of compare something kind of real. And the the one that um, the the Play one that I wrote, I wrote in Java. But I'm now working on a Scala one, and so now it'll be interesting to also throw a Scala in the mix and see oh. uh, see how that uh, does against the others. So, <laughs> yeah, I bet you can. I bet you can beat on lines of code with Scala and play. That's right. Pretty like in Scala, it. you could you could do everything in one line of code. I hear. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. It's a really long line, but yeah. One line. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. And do you have a second session? Yeah, and then the second session is Web Fundamentals. Uh, what I realized is that, that me included and a lot of Java developers uh, haven't really touched the kind of underlying HTTP stuff. You know, we, we live at this high level where we deal with abstractions, and as REST becomes more popular and prominent, I realized it's important to understand some of the underlying uh, pieces of HTTP. Like, how does session work? Like, how, do, how is that actually implemented yeah, on yeah. top of the HTTP protocol and um, some of that stuff? So, so it'll be fun to, to kind of dive underneath the covers and talk about item potency and other things I don't really understand. <laughs> but by the time Java 1 rolls around, you will be a local expert on. That's right. I've got three weeks. So. Yeah, plenty of time. Plenty of time. I, I have <laughs> to get started on one or two of my talks in the next, I don't know, 
Like I could wait two weeks before I actually start preparing. That would be about right, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There, you know, there's there's some Wikipedia page that I can learn everything from. Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. So we we have a bunch of folks in the live stream, and we got some questions. Um, so one of the questions was about the reactive manifesto. Um, uh, so I've, I've, I've heard about this and uh, apparently, um, the play framework is a, is a good example of some of these principles. So why would somebody want to care? Why would somebody care about this? That's a good question. So, uh, the reactive manifesto was written by Jonas Bonner and, uh, a number of other people, um, Martin Ordersky and Eric Meyer and uh, Guillaume Bort, the guy who created Play Framework. Mm -hmm. And their motivation for writing it was that there is a bunch of different terms out there right now that we're all kind of converging towards something. And uh, terms like like async and non-blocking and real-time and event-driven. And um, there's just kind of all these things kind of seem to be changing or emerging. And they aren't necessarily new things. I think that what's, what's new is, is that it, they're becoming finally mainstream. And so what, what uh, the authors tried to do was to, was to take those ideas and, and put a name to them, first of all, and that's the reactive name, and then actually drill down a step further and actually talk about what, react, what the elements of reactive are. So the, the four main elements uh, are um, resilient, uh, interactive, scalable, and event-driven. Um, so put another way, uh, applications that react to events, react to load, react to failure, and react to users. And, um, and so they, they wanted the, the reactive manifesto, this, this kind of description of reactive, to be something that was technology agnostic, to, to talk about technology and talk about how you deal with failure and how you uh, deal with load and all those sorts of things, but do it in a way that was agnostic to the technology. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's really where, where the reactive manifesto came about, uh, is just a, as a way of putting together some emerging things into a bundle. Yeah, because I know it. I know Jonas, for example, he did a whole reactive programming framework for Scala, um, but he's that's kind of a way of taking the concepts and the ideas behind what they're doing and putting it in a non um, non implementation. Exactly. Form. Exactly. So, so uh, Jonas created Akka, and Akka. Uh, I would say Akka handles the the React, uh, the well, let's see, the event driven, the scalable, and the resilient parts of Reactive. Mm -hmm. And then if you throw a play on top of that, then you get the interactive piece. Um, so, so Jonas was um, was looking for a way to describe what the heck this Akka thing is all about, uh, and, and reactive is what he came to. And what's been interesting is there's been a number of other places that we've seen reactive emerging from. Uh, there's the, the RX Java from the Netflix folks, which is a reactive implementation for Java. Mm -hmm. um, there's the reactive extensions uh, that Eric Meyer created at Microsoft. Um, and then there's a bunch of other things that we've seen coming out lately. There's reactive for JavaScript. And so, so we're starting to see reactive kind of, kind of pop up in a bunch of different places. Um, and so, so I think you know those guys, the authors of the manifesto, just wanted to to try to pull together all this, all these different ideas, and in, into one nice package. Okay, so just to to wrap that up, can you um, give folks a quick pointer to to where they could find out and sign up for the reactive manifesto? <laughs> Yeah, so reactivemanifesto.org is the website. You can read the manifesto there. You can sign it. There's over a thousand signatures there now. So, nice. um, so a lot of people are, are getting behind it and, and talking about it. And uh, and you know, we just saw a report come out from Gartner talking about reactive. So you know, once it hits Gartner, it kind of seems like like it's uh, it's actually real, or maybe it's gone too far. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very nice. You're getting you're getting compliments on your um, on your microphone on the in the chat. So Woo. your all right, your, my your 80s trendy mic. '80s microphone is um, is working out quite good. Sweet. <laughs> um, okay, so another question, uh, a little lighter. What what are your favorite bands and genres? What sort of music do you like listening to? Oh, that's a good question. Um, gosh, my my 
favorite band I think of all time is Modest Mouse, <laughs> and um, probably my second favorite band of all time is that's a, that's uh, a great is, band name. So that's that's a good starter right there. That is that is definitely. And then Alexi Murdoch, I think between Alexi Murdoch and and Modest Mouse, which is two kind of very different genres, but but uh, but yeah, both are awesome. Nice, nice. So Jim Jim is the um, <laughs> The expert on different um, genres and music, he always likes to weave that into his presentations. So um, he will, I'm sure he'll be very glad to find out what you like. And next time you see him, don't be surprised if you get a little present. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Jim. Looking forward to seeing you and talking about music. <laughs> exactly. Um, cool. So anything else you want to mention about what you're going to be doing at Java One or um, or what you're doing with TypeSafe in the short term? Um, you know, one of the things that that uh, I'm doing the week of Java One, which we haven't put out an official invite yet, but we will soon, is we're going to do a little hackathon at the TypeSafe office, uh, oh. building apps with Activator. So Activator is a new tool that uh, we've created at TypeSafe to help people start learning how to build reactive applications and start learning different pieces of uh, the TypeSafe technology. and and. Uh, so that's currently in developer preview, and we'll be doing a hackathon to help people get started building apps with Activator the week of Java One. I think it'll be on Monday afternoon, nice, and uh, nice. and we'll we'll be posting that information about that on our Twitter Twitter channel on uh, at TypeSafe. Cool, Soon. cool. That should be yeah. very cool. And folks who are watching the stream get a, a head up on signing up for that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, so that's uh, that'll be fun. Uh, you know, I think TypeSafe is going to do a, a party. Uh, also, um, we we're still trying to figure out all the details, which we better do soon since we have three weeks to, to get that done. Right? Yeah, three weeks. Plenty, plenty, plenty of time. Plenty of plenty of time. Plenty yeah. of time. But uh, you know, my favorite part of Java One is just hanging out with with people, getting beers, and all the great conversations that uh, that we have there. Sitting in beanbag chairs and and yeah. uh, writing code with yeah, people. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's really the meeting place for um, Java experts across the world, and there's a huge international um, posse of folks who comes in for Java One each year. Probably more international than even local folks who attend. So um, if you're going to go one place to meet folks in the Java space, that's it. Yeah, it's definitely true. It's it, it's amazing to go to Java One and just see the diversity of of people and and nationalities of of Java developers. So you know, here up in Crested Butte, there's only one other Java guy, Bruce Eckel. And <laughs> so it's it's fun for me to get out and see some see some diversity. Not yeah, that I don't like yeah. seeing Bruce, but <laughs> yeah, Bruce is a good guy. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks very much for the the short interview, and I look forward to seeing you at Java One in a few weeks. Yeah, look forward to it too. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I managed to get my mouse to stop the recording. It was fun.